Mark Marcus to break deal with Honda and leave for KTM or Ducati? Today we're gonna find out together. This is Go Grande and I'm back. Hi everyone, it's surely been a while and I'm very happy to be here again. So let's get back to business. So we all know the three past seasons were a complete disaster for Mark Marquez, his team, and especially for Honda Raps or MotoGP team. This is a disaster. We all surely miss those times when he was fighting Dobby. Again, and again, and again, and again. Honda is not an easy bike to ride, and Mark Marquez was risking himself with all these years to perform so well on this bike. We all remember Jorge Lorenz, a champion indeed, despite all his popularity. <laughs> And look at Jorge Lorenzo, magnificent, amazing racist, I mean racer. Part of Yamaha, he managed to win on Ducati, and he was getting paid 25 million each season, by the way. So we all know how Jorge ended his career, he signed a deal with Honda, it didn't match his style, it could not work with him, we all thought that Jorge is just out of the game, but he's a champion. After Danny Pedroza, nobody could really fulfill this spot. Didn't work out with Jorge Lorenzo, didn't work out with Joan Mir. What's going on with this bike? And now the king himself cannot ride it. It's generally two steps behind every single manufacturer. It's one step behind Yamaha, two steps behind KTM and Aprilia, and of course, Ducati is Ducati. They deserve to be where they are today. So what's up with Marcus? He has one year to remain at Honda. He gets paid, he does his best, and nobody says nothing to him. But Mark Marcus is not there just to make money. It's about sending a message. It's a real champion who wants to beat scores of the big boys, and I don't want to call their names, but we all know who those are. So the unbeatable king needs to do something about his one-year deal. This is why he waits for the test results that are gonna come up after Valencia to decide a new thing. We all know that recently, Petey himself at KTM invited Mark Marcus for dinner, and we all know that Red Bull is biggest sponsor of Mark Marcus. So as I said last year, it was just a matter until Red Bull pulls Mark Marcus into their hands, into their primary team. And of course, Marcus' team would want that. They've been waiting for KTM to get stronger. I think it's a great time now. However, two things. Marcus has contract with Honda, still a bit risky to move to KTM and there are no open spots. Now we all know how KTM are when it comes to their reputation between them and riders. You are next. Brad Binder is not going nowhere. In fact, he signed until 2027, which means he's the MVP in this whole KTM story. Jack Miller is surprisingly doing very well and I congratulate him with all my heart and respect. Viva Miller. Now Espargaro and Fernandes on the other hand, they still have contracts for another year and KTM could potentially fire them up to get Mark, but Mark would not jump on the raw KTM on the satellite team. If he would move to KTM would be a factory bike. So they have Brad Binder, they've been growing together with him and this is just amazing. I love this about KTM. But Jack Miller is doing well. Why would you move somebody as a second strong rider out of the team? So there is no point to kick anyone out for Mark Marquez. And now Pedro Acosta. Dorna wanted him to be on the MotoGP grid next year, but somehow it's just not happening yet. Of course, this is a condition. Nobody wants to lose him, and it's all gonna be arranged by Dorna in the best way possible for a teams and rider himself. But the main winner here is, of course, Dorna. KTM clearly wanted to have another bike, the fifth bike on the grid this season. Why is it not working out? Where is this bike? And the answer is very simple, my friends. There is no spot, and you have to buy it. And the idea was to buy LCR Honda and get its person to ride it. But how? How are they gonna do it? They cannot have another KTM. This, ladies and gentlemen, was a moment when KTM decided to make their master plan true. To create another spot for their brand new company that recently purchased MV Augusta. But the best thing about it is 
to put Mark Marquez into this team. Agustini was so excited about those rumors that he said, wow, I just want to take a part of it. I want to be his mentor, his trainer, his coach, his coffee maker or whatsoever. It's not going to happen anytime soon. Nope. You cannot do this team until you buy this spot. It ain't gonna happen. But we all know that LCR are very loyal to Honda. They're staying there and they're not leaving nowhere. In fact, Zarco is taking this spot already for next season. So what's up with Mark Marcus? The guy has no places to go. KTM has no open position for him despite all those future dreams with Red Bull. But it will assure you it will happen one day. Mark Marcus will retire on KTM. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of the question to be asked now is where will he go? Will he stay in Honda Repsol or he would move to Ducati? If Honda will manage to pull a magic trick and this bike will roll out on test and will surprise Mark Marcus and this is gonna be sounding promising. However, it's not easy for this thing to happen yet. But what if Honda will not make a good one? What if Honda will continue delivering a non-competitive shitty toolbox? So what's Mark Marcus has to lose except for his money? and reputation. It's his time. He's already 30 years old. It's hard to be competitive at this age in MotoGP. We all know how this happened before in past and it's hard to stay competitive with those youngsters still, yet it is possible. But the best strategy is to be with the strongest one. Now, Grisini team. This is exactly why Jaime Martinez has recently started to talk about his backup plan for Marc Marquez with the Gatti Grisini team. In case if Honda screws up this bike again after the test, this would be a perfect moment to make a little step back in order to make two steps forward next season with a much more competitive bike. Let's take a look at Alex Marquez's performance with Honda in MotoGP. He started out in the Premier Class with Honda Repsol with factory team and he got himself good nice 74 points in this hard year 2020. Moving to 2021, he got himself 70 points and last year he only granted himself 50 points. But look at this now, with Ducati Grisini team, he obviously makes a very nice competition this bike, it seems to match his style so quite well. Alex Marquez has made 92 points so far this season and it's not even been finished yet. Bravo! After all, I'm very happy for Alex. Now two brothers. Two brothers. Yeah, those two brothers. In a van they could potentially end up in the same team it would be great for sponsors great for their fans great for audience as a temporary bike it would be just great so ladies and gentlemen for mark marcus there are not many things to consider right now he has to wait until the end of the season to do the test to see if honda has improved for the next year if it's gonna sound promising or if it's going to be another shit box in case if honda bike will remain a big disappointment and Grisini places would still be available, Mark Marcus would definitely take his chance to go to Grisini. Mark Marcus will most likely take the spot and spend another year in a, on a competitive bike with a competitive team and wait for open positions in a factory team. So for Mark Marcus there are not many options but just to wait. Meanwhile trying to stay positive, trying to Fight this bike because Honda Repsol bike is a bull bike. You know, you have to be from Texas to ride it, in my opinion, because it's a real cowboy bike. I know there are a lot of Americans watching me. Thank you very much, guys. I love you all. So many people from different countries. I admire you all. Thank you very much. We're gonna continue with Go Ground and see how far can we go like this. If you manage to watch it to the end, I love you guys. I'm back.